In the opening scene, David is painting while his daughter Leon beckons him to catch butterflies as promised. David tells her that he must run an errand first and he will play with her later. David visits his mistress across the street and tells her not to expect too much from their relationship because it is just for fun. They quickly have fun together and he leaves. He calls out to Leon when he gets home and immediately sees a ribbon near the pool. He dives in to find his daughter's shoelaces tangled in the drain and he cannot pull it to the surface. It is now too late. Flash forward five years and David has been devastated by his daughter's death ever since. He is banging on his ex-wife's Mia's door, begging her for forgiveness. She only shouts at him that their daughter had to die because he was having fun with their neighbor. Her new boyfriend tells him to leave her alone. Despondent, David returns to the pool where his daughter died and makes a stupid decision. He imagines his daughter on a bench. They run to each other and embrace. Moments later, his best friend Max resuscitates him at the pool's edge. Later at a bar, Max is concerned and invites David to stay with his family in his guest room. Max drones on about his children while David can only think of the loss of his, so he leaves. David is walking down the street. He slips on the ice and sees a frozen butterfly in the snow. As he picks it up, it returns to life and flies away. He follows it to an abandoned tunnel with a light at the end. He steps through a door and enters a sunny, warm day in another world, which really is his past, the day his daughter died. He sees himself walking across the street to his mistress. He remembers that it was the afternoon, then runs down the street. A truck hits him. He is injured, but gets up and goes to save his daughter. He dives into the pool, and as before, he finds Leon, her lace tangled, but this time he frees her and they come to the surface. She is alive and asks him not to tell mummy her laces were untied. So happy to have her back, he cherishes her and sets her down for a nap. He knocks a pencil jar over and as he is picking them up, his former self returns and attacks the intruder. Now, there are two Davids. The past David questions who he is. They scuffle and the future David attacks the other with a pencil and he bleeds out. Now he has killed his former self. His daughter sees the body from the top of the stairs and asks him, what is he doing? She notices the body and blood. He tells her to go back to her room. He attempts to clean up the murder scene and cover up the assault. He puts former David in a bag. He hears the phone ring. It is his wife, Mia, saying she will be late. David drags the body into his backyard and buries it. His daughter peers out at him suspiciously. He discards the clothing and changes appearance to look more like the David from five years past. He showers, trims and dyes his hair, and burns his clothes along with documents from the future. His wife Mia comes home with the groceries and announces they will have a dinner guest. The guest is his best friend Max, who had saved David just hours ago in the future. We learn that Max has yet to have a family and David is a famous artist. Leon is mistrustful of David and announces that this man is not her real daddy. Her mother comforts her daughter and says she can explain what she meant by that odd remark when she is ready. Mia speaks with David and says their constant fighting is probably affecting Leon. Their marriage is on the rocks as Mia knows about his past affairs. David cannot find his phone and searches the buried body for it. His neighbor Ziggy, who saw him get hit by the truck, comes over. Through the darkness, David hears him say they need to talk, but David ignores him. The next morning, Mia calls David's phone and a woman answers. David takes the call, lying that the caller found it in the street and goes to retrieve it. He had left it at the home of his mistress. She gives him the ultimatum of either continuing their affair or she will tell his wife. David replies that he has a family he cares about and does not want to hurt them, then leaves. Max sees David sneaking away from her house and confronts him about being unfaithful to Mia at the bar. David asks Max if he can keep a secret and tells him the whole story of the passageway that brought him five years back from the future to fix things and prevent Leon from dying. Max disbelieves him and questions him about what he did with the other David. He admits to killing him accidentally. To prove his point, David says he knows Max's future, that he will be successful and have two sons. Max just thinks he is crazy. The next day, David sees the man who will become Mia's future boyfriend is Leon's music teacher. He questions Leon about him and she tells her father that she hates the music lessons and wants to quit. 
In his attempts to earn Leon's trust, David promises her she can quit the music lessons if she only gives him one hug, and she complies. Later, at a backyard gathering, a toy lands on the burial mound and the children notice a horrible smell and flies all around the area. Again, Leon tells her friend Nyla that this man is not her real daddy. David replies, then who am I? And they play around. Leon is slowly letting David get closer to her as her fear of him diminishes. Meanwhile, David is also trying to rekindle his relationship with Mia and it is working as they reminisce about their good times. The next day, David decides to tell Leon a bended truth when she questions him about what she saw. He says her real daddy is still alive, but far away where he cannot be written or phoned. David explains that he is a guardian angel who has replaced her daddy because he did not protect her. Her ex-daddy was ashamed, but now he is here to do better. At night, David snuggles with Mia in an attempt to reestablish a loving relationship. The next night, at David's big birthday party, everyone's happily dancing and celebrating together. David's life seems perfect. He sees Max conversing with Leon, then storming out toward the backyard. He walks over and looks at a picture his daughter drew showing David killing a man. Now Max suspects David is an imposter who murdered his friend. Kneeling over the shallow grave in the backyard, Max notices the rain has revealed a body under the soil. Max accuses David of murder and the two fight. He is demanding to know who this David really is and threatens to tell Mia about it when suddenly Ziggy appears from behind striking Max with a pick and killing him. Ziggy tells David it was his job to kill Max because he was going to squeal on him. They drive to the forest to bury him. After changing his dirty clothes, David returns and tells everyone the party's over. He forces Mia to leave with Leon, bringing them to the portal door in an attempt to take them to the other side for their protection. As they lurk through the dark tunnel, David reaches the door, but Mia is no longer behind him. Outside, Ziggy holds him at gunpoint and threatens to kill David if he attempts to go back again. The next day, Mia questions about his odd behavior. David lies and says that Max got him high and he doesn't even remember why he took them there. While relaxing with Leon, Ziggy bursts in, making an excuse to bring David to his house in order to set things straight. Ziggy explains that he too is from the future. His life was in ruins. He was in prison for fraud doing over eight years when on a furlough he found the door bringing him back five years. However, the catch is those who pass must kill anyone who knows and obviously your former self. The price for your happiness is that you must eliminate those who cannot keep the secret and those who discover it and threaten to report the door to the authorities. Ziggy tells him there are many others who have traveled through that door from the future. As he returns home, his neighbor Susanna invites Leon over for a play date with her daughter, Nyla. After they leave, Mia sees Susanna and her husband arguing in the street, so she follows them to their kitchen where she witnesses them killing the real Susanna and Paul. She grabs the kids and runs away, but the new Paul knows she saw them. Mia is about to call the police, but David begs her not to. The police arrive with Nyla's parents, who have reported that Mia kidnapped her. As Susanna and Paul go to take Nyla home, Mia freaks out in front of the police, telling them that they are not Nyla's real parents, they killed her parents. As the policeman leaves, he tells David he needs to control his wife, because until now, they have not had any trouble of this kind in the neighborhood. Leon shares with Mia that Nyla has new parents now. They will take better care of her, just like her new daddy said, and she likes him even more than her old one. Future Mia calls David from Ziggy's house and tells him she wants to be with him and Leon. She says she just wants to be with her and not hurt the old Mia. Ziggy says it doesn't work that way and she will now have to kill Mia and replace her. David volunteers to kill the old Mia instead. When David enters the house with the gun, Mia attacks him. He tells her to calm down and he is there to save her. She admits she knows the killing and tells her that the old David did not love her anymore. He pleads with her to grab Leon and escape through the portal door because the people in this world are coming to kill her. Ziggy realizes David tricked him and organizes his neighbors to prevent David's escape. Everyone is trying to stop them from reaching the portal. Mia runs and finds Leon with her past mother. She begs her to let her take their daughter through the portal. David creates a diversion, making it appear his wife and child are inside. 
The police make a roadblock, and the car crashes, revealing only David inside. Ziggy and the others see Mia and Leon running and begin shooting at them, but the old Mia grabs the gun as David drives into the crowd. With Ziggy on the hood, he drives into the door, causing a collapse just as Mia and Leon pass through. The portal is forever closed for anybody in both directions to pass through. The film ends with Mia and David gazing into an empty pool without their daughter, who has now been released into the future. What do you think about this movie? Do you think time travel is better left alone? Leave your comments below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.